Today, I'm going to be applying for the Capital One Venture X credit card. This credit card's been on my radar a while. However, I have not yet been able to grab it due to the rather strict guidelines Capital One has for approving people for this card. In this video, I'm going to discuss why I want this credit card, why I likely won't be approved, some considerations when you are applying for this credit card yourself. And finally, I'm going to apply live and see if I get approved. This is a higher end credit card with a $395 annual fee. However, with that annual fee, you get a $300 travel credit towards any travel booked through the Capital One portal and 10,000 miles every card member anniversary. This effectively makes it to where we are paid $5 to keep this card each and every year, assuming that we are able to use that credit and those miles. This isn't including the 75,000 mile signup bonus that you get when initially opening the card and spending $4,000 in the first three months. So even without all of the other benefits this card has between the signup bonus and the yearly perks, I have already more than covered my yearly annual fee. Next, let's talk about lounge access. So the Capital One Venture X gives access to the Capital One lounges, Priority Pass lounges, and Plaza Premium lounges. What's most notable about this, however, is the fact that this also applies to all authorized users and you can add authorized users to the card for free. This is actually pretty rare. For most credit cards that give you lounge access, they charge you to add an authorized user just so they aren't getting those lounge benefits for free. There are two limitations I'd like to mention about this lounge access. With the Priority Pass lounges, these do not include the Priority Pass restaurants, unfortunately, and the Capital One lounge network is currently rather limited since they are just now starting to develop them. Currently, the only Capital One lounge that is open is in DFW, which ironically enough is my home. However, they are also currently opening lounges in Denver and Washington, D.C. This lounge network will expand over the next couple of years. And of course, in the meantime, you have the Priority Pass lounges and the Plaza Premium lounges that have a much more extensive lounge network throughout the world. Those two benefits are the most notable benefits of this card. Outside of that, it's rather standard. We get a $100 global entry credit. However, I have probably 15 other cards that give this as well. We have pretty standard point multipliers, uh, 10x on hotels and rental cars booked through Capital One Travel, 5x on flights booked through Capital One Travel, and 2x on all other purchases. I don't think I'll personally take advantage of those 10x and 5x multipliers as the only time I plan on booking through Capital One Travel is when taking advantage of that $300 annual credit. However, I will say a flat 2x back is fairly nice. You also do have the ability to transfer out these miles to all of the partners shown on screen, or you're able to redeem them for one cent per point towards any travel purchases. Other than that, this card has no foreign transaction fees as expected by a card of this tier. Finally, you can also get a complimentary Hertz Gold membership, kind of standard travel protections and insurance that comes with credit cards, cell phone protection, and access to the Premier Hotel Collection, which offers similar benefits to the Fine Hotels and Resorts Collection by American Express. So overall, like I said, I'm interested in this card for those first main two benefits. However, I do not think I will be approved because Capital One is very against people who play the credit card rewards game and have lots of revolving accounts. So despite the fact that I currently have between a 750 to 800 credit score and the fact that I have never missed a payment, Capital One will likely deny me for this card just due to the number of revolving accounts that I have. At any given time, I normally have between 15 and 20 credit cards, which Capital One does really not like, even if my income and my payment history supports my ability to have this many credit cards. However, this time I am a little hopeful. I'm currently only at five personal credit cards in the last 24 months. Luckily, they aren't looking at how many business credit cards I have open since all of my business credit cards don't go on my personal credit report. And this is the fewest number of credit cards I have opened since I have started the credit card game. In fact, even if I get approved for this card, I'll be under, I'll be at 424 by the end of the summer again. So because of that, I'm a little bit hopeful this time that Capital One's actually going to give me a chance. 
That being said, the common advice you'll hear when you start the credit card game is to prioritize Chase when you're under five new accounts in the past 24 months, just due to Chase's 524 rule. However, while you're under 524, I would really prioritize getting this card or any other Capital One card you may be interested in as well, just because of how restrictive they are relative to other issuers. It's also important to note that Capital One is going to pull all three personal credit bureaus for this approval. That means you'll have a hard inquiry show up on each of these credit bureaus. There is data points to suggest that you can have one credit bureau frozen and still get approved. And if that's the case, you are able to only have this hard inquiry show up on two of your credit reports. It sounds like if you're going to freeze, one of them cannot be Equifax, so it either has to be Experian or TransUnion. Freezing your credit reports, however, does seem like a little bit of a year mileage may vary scenario. And if you are going to do that, I would suggest checking doctor of credit or similar forms to see if people are currently having success with only having two of the credit bureaus pulled. For me personally, I don't really care about the hard inquiry, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So before I actually apply for the card, I'm going to go ahead and check the Capital One pre-approval tool. You can find this in the description or just go ahead and Google that. And this tool may show you whether you're pre-approved for the card only with a soft credit pull. On top of that, there are sometimes elevated offers within this tool. So as an example, currently with the uh, Venture card, the bonus is 75,000 miles. But if you look through this tool, you have a chance of getting offered 100,000 miles. So you never want to leave money on the table and you always want to look through this tool first. And since it's a soft credit pull, there's really no consequences for doing so. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. It's going to ask me which of these is most important. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we select. And I'm going to fill out this information real quickly. We're just going to fill out our name, our address, our phone number and email address, our employment status, our education, our income and our, uh, our income level and our rent or mortgage obligations. For our income as well, we may be able to include other things other than our traditional W-2 income, such as if we receive any support from relatives or anyone pays for any of our expenses, so keep that in mind. It's going to ask us if we have any bank accounts. It's going to ask for our date of birth and social security number. And finally, uh, we can agree to the terms of service and see if we have any pre-approval offers. So looking at the cards I'm pre-approved for, none of them are any travel cards such as the Venture or Venture X. So this doesn't bode well for my application that I'm about to do. But regardless, I want to check this just in case there was a higher offer available. Now, if you don't have a higher offer through the pre-approval tool, uh, I would recommend go ahead and applying using someone's referral link, whether that is mine, uh, another YouTubers you like, one of your friends or someone down in the comments. For me personally, I talked to some of y'all through the comments and emails, and one of y'all recently emailed me a referral link during our conversation. So I'm going to go ahead and use that to apply. Okay, I'm now at the actual application for the Venture X using one of y'all's referral links. And now I'm going to do the official application that will result in a hard pull to the three credit bureaus. I'm going to go ahead and fill out this application with my personal information. It's going to ask for some contact information. I'm going to go ahead and fill this out with my address. Next, it's going to ask for employment status and income. Important to note here, it's also going to ask us for our monthly rent payments if we have any checkings and savings accounts and how often we carry a balance on any of our credit cards. I'm going to put never for the credit card balance question because that is factually true. However, it does appear that Capital One does actually prefer people who carry a balance for whatever reason, at least based on the data points we have on the various forms. It'll also give us the option to go ahead and add an authorized user. I'm going to skip that for now, but I may worry about that later on. And finally, we'll be able to review all of our information on this final page. I'm going to opt in for paperless statements because I hate having that many credit card statements set to my address. And finally, I'm going to submit. 
So just as I anticipated, I was not approved for this credit card. Capital One remains the single issuer that is popular that I still don't have a credit card with, unfortunately. And like I said, this is likely due to the amount of revolving accounts I have. So my recommendation to you all is to not make the same mistakes I have and prioritize Capital One early on in the credit card journey. In reality, if you are watching this channel and you're first starting out, you should prioritize Chase and Capital One early on if you want any Capital One cards. Of course, I think the Chase environment in general is more powerful, but regardless, the Venture X remains a valuable credit card. If you do decide to apply for this credit card, and would like to support the channel, please use any of the links that we have available in the description to complete your application. Hopefully this was a uh, learning opportunity for y'all. This was actually the result I expected. I just cannot seem to get through with Capital One. It seems through my communication with y'all and reading various forms such as Doctor of Credit that a lot of y'all also have trouble getting approved for this card. So maybe I'll try again about a year from now and we'll see how that goes. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.